Green Bay, Wisconsin is well known throughout the United States for its football team. Recently, U.S. News increased the city's popularity by ranking Green Bay as the number one place to live in all of America. Given how much people seem to love this Wisconsin city, we head there now to explore some of its more iconic sites. Hey sightseers, Sightseeing Sally here. I'm with Marty. And today we're going to check out Bay Beach and Green Bay. Yes, we are in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And the reason we're here in Green Bay is because not only was it ranked the best metro place to live in all of the United States, it is also home to the Green Bay Packers, which if you know anything about the Packers, people... They're, they're America's team. Yes, they're America's team. And besides that, Green Bay also has some really neat historic places, iconic places that you won't find anywhere else. Today we thought we'd take you around to some of these classic places and we're starting off here at Bay Beach. Now the reason we decided to stop here at Bay Beach first off is because it happens to be one of Marty's favorite places and it's really just reminiscent of times gone by with the old classic carnival rides. Now granted you're not going to be riding any rides today on a day like today when the temperatures are in the teens. However, in summer when Bay Beach is open, this place is usually packed with people. As you can see from the footage that I'm putting up now, we have been here before. Bay Beach, like I said, is one of Marty's favorite places. And actually it is just a very family friendly, a nice thing to do on a summer's day where you can take your family out for a picnic and enjoy some classic carnival rides. Now what's really cool about Bay Beach is it is really inexpensive to come here. The tickets for one never expire. So whatever tickets you have laying around in your drawer from years ago when you came down to Bay Beach and maybe you didn't use all those tickets up, you can bring them the next time you come here and still be able to use them. That's really cool. I mean. How many places where you go that you get a ticket and it expires and you're like, darn, missed opportunity. Not here at Bay Beach. You can, like I said, bring those old tickets on in and they'll still honor them. They have seen ones dating back to the 1950s. The other thing that makes Bay Beach so inexpensive is that each of the tickets only costs 25 cents a quarter. And generally, you only have to give up anywhere between two to four tickets to get on a ride, making it a really inexpensive option for families who want to take their kids out to have some old-fashioned fun. And when I say old-fashioned fun, I'm not talking just about the old-style carnival rides that you see here. I'm also talking about the fact that this site was established first in 1892 with a simple bathhouse and dance hall. Later in 1908, the first ride arrived and it was called Shoot the Shoots. Shoot the Shoots, that sounds like a fun ride, doesn't it, Marty? Absolutely. You wanna explain what it was? I remember right, it was like a flat bottom boat that went down like, I think it was on water like a roller coaster thing and you went down like 50 or 100 feet. Probably some sketchy old stuff from years ago with no safety. <laughs> probably, but I imagine it made a huge splash. And it probably was a lot of fun with no safety. You know how that goes. Yep, yep. Probably the front runner of like that one ride that you ride at Disney. What is that called? The log ride or? Splash Mountain it used to be called. I don't know what it's called now. Yeah, that's the ride I'm thinking of. As I mentioned before, you've got the classic carnival rides here, like the bumper cars, the scat, the ferris wheel. There's actually two ferris wheels here now. But there's one ride in particular that draws fans in because not only is it a classic carnival ride, it also happens to have a reputation that surpasses all the other ones here. And that is the Zippin' Pippin', one of the oldest wooden roller coasters still in existence today. 
and reportedly Elvis's favorite ride. Allegedly. That's right, sightseers. Before the Zippin' Pippin' made its way to Green Bay, it used to be set up in an amusement park over in Tennessee where Elvis reportedly used to ride it rather frequently. All I can say is thank goodness I'm not a large-chested woman, which is probably why Elvis did have issues when he was riding. And then I just want to point out that adjacent to Bay Beach is the Wildlife Sanctuary. It's open 8 to 4.30. And like the sign says, they've got a wildlife viewing area. They also have a building where you can go on inside and see some of the animals like the reptiles and amphibians. And they've got a birdhouse where they've got birds that they're rehabilitating birds that were injured out in the wild. Some of them get brought here and they take care of them. Some of them are re-released back out into the wild, but others, depending on the extent of their injuries, end up becoming lifelong residents here. Next up on the agenda is one place that's for many of you will be a blast from the past and hopefully a good place to warm up. Well, here we are. I know McDonald's may not be especially exciting to most of you, but this particular McDonald's is home to something that is rather unusual and unique. A classic sign that you don't see anymore featuring Speedy. And Speedy, they should have kept him as a mascot because Ronald McDonald is a lot creepier. Better mark this down, sightseers. This is one of the few times I'm going to agree with Marty on camera. He is definitely right about that. I personally think Ronald McDonald is creepy. And I like Speedy. I think he's a cute little guy. Me too. He looks manly, not cute. <laughs> What's interesting to note is that this particular McDonald's was 91 in the system. In other words, it was the 91st McDonald's to be built. And while the building itself has been remodeled to look like the classic McDonald's, the sign is actually the original. Believed to be only one of a few left in the entire country, this classic neon sign features Speedy and also shows the amount of burgers sold back when McDonald's used to show you the actual number on their sign. Since it's such a chilly day out, we're going to go on inside and check out the location where this iconic sign is standing. Granted, the restaurant isn't original, but it'd still be cool to see how it looks. Well, this is definitely different from when things were back in the day. The outside might be set up as classic, but it's definitely modernized in the inside. And you'll notice that I didn't talk at all during because they had classic music playing in the back. Well, we're going to head on over to our next stop, which if Marty and I are on the same page, keeping in line with the theme of classic, that'll be Green Bay's old downtown. And when I say old, I'm talking historic. But first, before we get into some of the historic buildings, I want to point out a classic building that many of you who are from Wisconsin, particularly northeastern Wisconsin, will remember, especially if you were a teenager back in the 80s, 90s. And that is the old or former Port Plaza Mall. 
Now home to what I believe is office space for Schreiber Foods. This used to be the place to come. If you were a teenager back in the 80s, early 90s, this is where you'd come on weekends. It was the place to be. You know, you'd go shopping with your friends, hang out in the food court, get yourself an Orange Julius. And how do I know this? Because I used to come here back in the late 80s. I wouldn't necessarily tell my parents I was gonna make the trip to Green Bay, but somehow me and my friends would find ourselves here hanging out on the weekends. At some point, hanging out at the mall became a thing of the past, although I hear Gen Z is helping make malls a comeback. Apparently they didn't think our fashion trends were so bad because they've been recycling a lot of them. Who knows, maybe big hair will make a comeback too one of these days. Did you ever hang out here at the mall? Yeah, actually I did when I was 18. I drove here a couple times over the, you know, way back then and hung out in the mall, walked around. What was your favorite thing to do here? I don't remember the store. But they used to have a joke shop here in one of the stores in the mall on the first floor. I don't remember what it was called, but I just like looking at the joke stuff. I don't know. They had like a pen that you clicked and it shot foam out of it and, you know, disappearing ink. Stuff when I was a kid. That seems to be right up your alley. <laughs> Go figure, a joke shop. <laughs> yep, it was. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't mention Orange Julius. Personally, for me, that was one of my favorite places to visit here. And I remember you'd always go up the escalator, and there it was right at the top. Well, I got news for you. I've never had an Orange Julius in my life and never tasted one. What? Never had one. Never Are tasted you serious? One. Yeah. Oh my, those were like an 80s staple. I loved Orange Julius. Never had one. Wow. I just learned something mm. new, folks. Sightseers. I might have to dig up a recipe because I think I might have one that makes a very similar concoction to the original Orange Julius. I just assumed it tastes like an orange cream soda or something. Mm, I was better than that. Or like a dreamsicle. Yeah, kind of more like a dreamsicle, but better than an orange soda. Moving on, we're over at the corner of North Adams Street and Northland Ave, and the hotel that is directly in front of me is known as Hotel Northland. On the Wisconsin Register of Historic Places, the Hotel Northland opened in March of 1924, and at that time was the largest hotel in Wisconsin. One of Green Bay's classic, iconic spots, Hotel Northland has seen many a famous person stay here. People like John F. Kennedy, Eleanor Roosevelt, and then of course you had all the away teams that came to play against the Packers, Vince Lombardi. People like that have stayed here over the years. Look, up here in the corner, they have a plaque on the side of the building. Let's take a quick look and see what it says. According to the placard, it says that Hotel Northland was the social hub during Packer weekends and other Packer-related events from the time it opened up through the 1960s. Vince Lombardi's introductory press conference was held here and interestingly enough, Curly Lambeau lived here at one time, along with a number of other Packer players. You could say that Hotel Northland has had quite the history. Speaking of Packers and history, over here on the corner of South Washington and Crook Street, you'll find the old administration building for the Packers. And over here you have what used to be the Milwaukee Railroad Depot. According to this placard, the Packers, when they used to travel exclusively by trains, throngs of people would come here to welcome them home. 
And oh, by the way, this train depot was built in 1898, and the last train pulled out of here on January 15th, 1958. Hmm. January 15th. Now, why does that date sound familiar to me? Well, if that doesn't make a picture-perfect setting, I don't know what does. That's one of the things I like about Green Bay. The city that got rated the best place to live also has some really beautiful places to get your photo op on. Did you know that at one time the Packers actually rode the train to go to all of their games or their away games? On purpose? Well, yeah, that's how they traveled. Well, were they broke or what? Were they that bad they didn't have any money? They were that broke? <laughs> You're asking the wrong person because I'm not exactly up on Packer history. But according to the placard over there, they used to ride the train and people would come welcome them home after their games. There would be throngs of people, like in the thousands. Riding the old rails like hobos, huh? I guess, I guess. But the interesting thing, too, to remember is the Packers kind of had humble beginnings. I mean, they were named after the meat packing industry here yeah, in that, town. I think that's where they were named from, yeah, the meat packing industry. And really, out of all the teams in the NFL, they're the only one that's what owned by shareholders, by by its fans. It's publicly held. Yeah, publicly held. So it's not like privately owned, you know, like all the other teams out there. This, the fans can actually own a part of their team. And that's why they're, I think, called America's team too. And they're the most like team in the United States. Probably they're one of the oldest though too. That too. So even though they were riding the rails like hobos at one time, yeah. They've certainly expanded since then. And seeing as, you know, we're here in Green Bay and we'd be remiss if we didn't show you that expansion, we're going to head over to the stadium now. Let's go. We're almost to the stadium. Right, Marty? There it is. If you look, you can start seeing it. Off in the distance, there it is, right up over there. And it looks like they're doing more construction because I see a crane. It always seems like they're doing some sort of expansion It's been here. under construction since they built it. It's just getting bigger and bigger. You can see the crane right there. We're here and we're just gonna show you a little bit of it. You could actually do an entire video on it. We're not going to do that today. You can see you've got a couple of statues here commemorating important people from Packers early days. I don't even watch football and I know that's Curly Lambo. Lambo. <gasps> Vince Lombardi, I think. They're Lombardi and Curly. Yeah, this is <laughs> Curly <Nice>. Lambo. <laughs> nice try, Marty. <laughs> this one over here is Curly Lambo, which Lambo Field is named after. And then over here you've got Vince Lombardi. And obviously behind it is the Lambo Field Atrium, home of the Green Bay Packers, the Packers Stadium. Wow, this place is something else. Don't hate me, but I'm going to admit I am not a Packer fan. It's only because <laughs> we're not big football fans. We don't really get into sports. I can appreciate, however, how people here love the Packers. It's just, it's not my bag. I did get Lambo right, but on the wrong person. <laughs> That's right, Marty. You got, <laughs> you got it right only... If you were taking a test, you would have still failed. <laughs> hey, maybe I'll get a, what is it, a participation award? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> we'll just give you a participation award for being a good sport and coming out here because I know how much you love football. <laughs> I gotta go in the car. That's I'm getting right. chest pain. <laughs> 
with the sun setting in the background, it does make for a pretty picture. Although I can't say I'd want to go to a Packer game on a day like today.